just uh, okay. Um, so we are supposed to speak about this notion of growth. Right? Uh, uh, we had uh, a bit earlier some conversation already, uh, and we have different visions about what is growth <laughs> uh, according to our domain, I guess. Uh, who wish to start <laughs> to, to, to explain his or her vision about growth and in which domain of our society, culture? <laughs> Maybe that was from the audience. Uh, <laughs> by the way, we, we purposely set it up like this because we didn't want to make a frontal interest. <laughs> so we are supposed to make a discussion if, if anybody is interested in, interested in saying something, please. You're, you're very welcome. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, we were so enthusiastic earlier. No, no, but, uh, so for me, it's like, uh, in the beginning, when we were really uh, we were thinking of growth, um, when Bernard told us uh, we are focused on that, uh, and I watched the program, we were talking about many uh, institutions coming together, many people, and then thinking of that. Uh, of course, uh, this uh, organization, this festival is growing also, and uh, there's also more and more audience and more and more people, and I hope more and more money. <laughs> so we're like suddenly uh, thinking of the economical part, and uh, but uh, we we were thinking that we, if we watch that in the other perspective, is also many people coming together, completely different, more focused on the solidarity approach that we are there to uh, be concentrated and think about one topic together. So your notion of growth is a very positive. I want to, uh, <laughs> to, to, to yes, I want to, uh, to have this positive approach. Because of course we could think about mass production, about all this uh, element which is somehow uh, uh, um, killing or, or uh, reducing of uh, essential uh, part of the life, for instance. So, of course, there's a different uh, 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 perspective. Um, yeah. yeah, we were thinking about this. We were talking about uh, also the negative aspect of this infinite growth we have here uh, on Earth. <laughs> this, uh, we are being overwhelmed eh, with the productions, any kind of productions, cultural productions, goods, food, what are your opinions about this? Well, you were making a point that uh, we, we have just prepared, prepared ourselves by just talking a couple of hours, a good couple of hours within us. And I think you made a very good point when you compared uh, the production of uh, music to the production of goods, saying almost, if, correct me if I'm wrong, or I say it, uh, that you can even compare it a little bit to garbage, uh, the pro Sometimes, production yeah. of music. So and everybody can, can make music today. Uh, you don't need certainly a degree, a diploma or whatever. You just need a computer basically and a garage band or whatever, even easier system. And on one hand, what I find sympathetic and I also said it is that uh, it democratized the process. And I think it's important that in a society, everybody ma uh, makes, for instance, music or has the chance to do it. I would never like a society where this is delegated to hyper-professional, to professional people. And basically it's also, it's like if, I, if you uh, allow me a vulgar uh, comparison, it's like in foot, football. Huh? In the countries where everybody plays football, even the national football is a better one, uh, in a way. On the other hand, uh, it's true that we are just uh, confronted. I mean, more that I'm concerned with, of course, is the mule. I mean, the garbage in my own life. <laughs> because, of course, uh, you are part of a system that does ask you to produce and produce and produce and produce. And always produce something new. And so, like when I remember when I made my first uh, Nova, Nova is uh, this one of the projects that I do that are differently set up in terms of relationship, first of all, between me and the listeners. Uh, it's, it's a space where I move uh, in 
with the piano a bed at the table and I live there up to four weeks so far, minimum two weeks or four weeks, something like that. And I just play all the time. I have nothing but a piano. And uh, I did it the first pilot week, it was in Graz, Sire Chefs, for 10 years ago. And then uh, the uh, Italian team asked me, well, ah, it was so nice, what would you do for uh, next year? And I said, another week of no work. And another week of no work. And she said, I'm sorry, I can't do that. And I understand that she said it, but it says also something for me questionable, at least questionable about how it runs. Yeah. Well, Basically, yeah. if it's good, why, why? I mean, I wouldn't have done the same thing anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like this performance particularly, I don't want to spend too much time on it, but uh, it's uh, more a dimension, like a product. It's a space. That, that is also the reason why I'm doing this again and again, because it's not just a, a show that you, you show, mm -hmm. it's a part of your life. In a way, it's become part of my life, as much as other performances as well. So if we would have more uh, projects, or if I would have more, and I'm trying to have more uh, projects that are not projects, but just dimensions that you don't even need to, you know, constantly sell something new. Yeah, I yeah, understand. It reminds me of uh, an article. I forgot who wrote it. But the, the fact that um, failure is not permitted anymore in the domain of art. So you do an art residency, you need to finish it, and you need to give a final product or whatever it is. Yeah. You cannot be an artist and try to, to do your art, music or whatever, and then tell in the end of the residency, oh, I, I'm sorry, I, I couldn't produce anything. Uh, so we have to, yeah, this notion of growth is there too. We have to produce all the time, and especially if there is money involved. You, can, you cannot fail. This, provided you this money, you need to finish the job. That's it. Otherwise, you are out. But why should it be in the domain of the arts different than in, our, in any other domain? We live in a capitalist. That's true. We live in capitalist societies, or one capitalist society. I'm not sure. It's a very romanticized and beautiful perspective on art. But I'm not sure why this should be the one exception. Yeah, but but maybe, maybe we have a lot of scientific language. Yeah, so <laughs> they, they have exactly the same problem as scientists. We have uh, hundreds and hundreds of journals, and uh, we all have to journals. publish. <laughs> yeah, journals, uh, scientific journals, and uh, um, we all have to publish. So we have to finish, and uh, but there is nobody really um, checking the quality. Yeah? You know, well, probably one of you know about the like falsification of results. Yeah, yeah. It's often published directly on the uh, archive with this X. Mm -hmm. How do you say archive? So these are preprint. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But still, it's not 100% sure that the study yeah, is Yeah, they're not so It's already yeah. online and anyone can access it already. Yeah. So we have garbage too. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of it. And, and you were concerned when we were in the cafe about the limitedness of the resources. So this yeah, is how yeah, we yeah. started, right? Yeah, yeah, we started like this. Yeah. But my vision, I mean, it's not only my vision. It was a neg uh, more negative. Uh, like yeah, it's a more negative <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah, the, the fact that we produce non so If you produce music, okay. Fair enough, it's just waves in the air. Mm -hmm. But we, we, we produce a lot of other things. We produce CDs, we produce painting and films and, and goods and concrete and buildings and we build non stop. But this planet is not infinite uh, and we cannot recycle all the time. We do it very badly first. And uh, nowadays uh, we are about 7 billion people and it's Growing and growing and growing, and this plan is not fitted, so uh, we need to find a solution and we need to slow down, I think, <laughs> at some point. What is your view about this? And can you compare this to, to the music domain, for example, or to the art domain in general? I was telling him before that uh, um, that you cannot have this. In, uh, I'm a microbiologist, 
that microbes always feel how um, many resources they have. So they just automatically stop growing when, because, you know, they are single cells. And we were dreaming about a world where we immediately would feel like all the millions of people that are starving, because then we, we would, if we would not be isolated from them, then yeah, we would probably also stop growing. But we just, it's this isolation and this, uh, the, the, that we don't feel that the resources are limited and that they are ending, it makes us keep growing. Yeah, so. <laughs> mm. Yeah, and we have this notion, uh we think that if the other one uses something, we have the right to use it as well. Exactly. Well, bacteria don't think about this. <laughs> they don't think <laughs> but, but what they're cool about is that they just grow when they can afford to. Yeah. And they never grow too much because they divide. Growth and division are coordinated. Mm. Yeah. Always. Yeah. On the other hand, if we go back to music, this growth, I think. Uh, if I'm not wrong, at least in the Western world, there, ha there has never been, there have never been so many people composing music than now, thanks to the internet and new technologies and so on and so forth. It's a positive growth, I think, at some point, that because anyone, like you said, can access softwares or learn by him or herself music and exchange through the internet especially. But do you think it's, it's positive that everybody can now... Uh, it could be positive, but well, like, there is this point. notion of garbage, I agree with this, because with? there is this overproduction and uh, there is not quality. quality. Also, like, surrounded by information and at the end you feel and here nothing is like... Uh, I, I agree, but that doesn't mean that only garbage is generated. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are good things that happen and uh, those good things, uh, those good pieces of music and art would maybe never have been born without this uh, democratization of uh, technology, knowledge and so on. You can learn by yourself or you can switch your computer on and mm. find a tutorial online for anything right now. It is also, a, you need to sort out this, it's also a lot of pollution if you go on YouTube for example. Uh, you have so much there, you need to filter, and filtering is difficult. Mm -hmm. I think the question is who is judging what is the, what is the better art, and what is, what is garbage, mm -hmm. what is not, uh, and what are the criteria, and who is judging. Um, I think that's quite difficult to postulate like this. Mm -hmm. Well, you can judge for yourself at least now. I mean, I was, like I was thinking else, that this is also individualized. But we're, but we're talking they're, about they're a bigger, bigger, in a bigger picture. I mean. Yeah. Well, but if you want to to, to make a proposition to the world, mm -hmm. either as a politician or as a private person to your mm -hmm. next it's people, true. you have to first to choose for yourself what you think is right, no? or it could be right, and also, of course, listen from the others. But, uh, but to listen, you have to know mm -hmm. also. No? And uh, I do think that there are differences, of course, and I think the difference is more like uh, why we are doing something. So the problem that, uh, the, the effect that so much, got, like many people, they produce uh, things like music, for instance, they want to be famous, they want to, I don't know what they want, but, you know, like, but this is, could also be a horrible generalization. Like, I remember once I was, uh, for a project that I did, I had to scout people, uh, lion, so amateurs, and I went with the scouting lady. We spent some really wonderful for me, wonderful nights in karaoke bars in Vienna. <laughs> and uh, karaoke is something that you know, like a classical musician was uh, people that sing karaoke, and you think of drunk, drunk people and just. <laughs> and I actually I fell in love for this uh, few evenings with this place because it was like people. Instead of just drinking beer and screaming at some football players, uh, they were trying to sing Recht und Schlecht. And I found it quite Recht, actually. And uh, so I thought it was a wonderful way to gather and doing something to spend your life. Of course, I'm a musician, so I'm, a little, I'm not objective at all. But, um, yeah. I mean, in that case, we don't speak about production anymore. It's a very different level when you yeah. are at a karaoke. There is 
No real competition. They didn't no record. They no. didn't <laughs> make any recording. Yeah, they <laughs> yeah, try to make money out of that. Can I sure, of course. I mean, it, it is one thing I'm thinking about very much because, in, for example, in food, you have, on one hand, you have, for example, Nestle, um, which will start to print uh, meat from a 3D printer in five minutes, probably. Mm -hmm. uh, and on the other hand, you have small organic farmers or people who have a small garden and try to do something on a very decentralized level. And in the arts, I mean, you have both directions as well. Lots of the classical music business is Nestle, and, uh, <laughs> and there are alternatives. I mean, it's, um, I'm, I think it's, this is really one aspect where you can, can just start to differentiate between different models of reacting to growth and then, uh, and then pick and choose. Mm. Mm, I follow what you say and uh, uh, well, I understand, but the, to me the notion of alternative music an expression I use as well is a bit wrong because nowadays everything is accessible on online. No, I'm not talking so about alternative music, sorry. Uh, um, but an uh, alternative way of... Alternative ways of, of producing. For example, if you sing for yourself and five people in the karaoke bar, mm. it's a way of like producing and consuming music and on a very small scale. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you are trying to, uh, I don't know, if you look at classical agencies for um, star singers or violin players or whatever, they try to have their artists play like two times a week mm. for uh, at least 3,000 people or something like that. Yeah, so true, that's, true. A, that's a different approach. Uh, what did you want to say, Sebik? Uh, With alternative? Uh, oh, no. Well, what did you want to say? No, what, what, what I meant is that because everything is instantly or almost everything accessible now uh, online, there is no real alternative anymore. And those alternative <coughs> networks or so-called, they are part of the capitalist society as well. And they sell also <coughs> their products and so on. So they are part of this growth <laughs> again and again. There is, this is not like a few decades ago uh, anymore. Yeah, the problem is, if I can put it like that or speak for myself, is the Nestle in, in me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> now, of course, uh, because uh, when, uh, my first thought that I had, I am like, okay, the classical musician, you, the people who know me know that I Not so classic. Mo moved out of the box <laughs> a little bit, but basically, um, the first uh, um, image that I had when I have thought I have to think about growth and music, our music or my music world is the score itself, the music score, music score itself. No? Here we are in a, in a uh, Saal where is, uh, <laughs> we have uh, the score of Unvollendete and Dritte, Eroica, Third Symphony by Beethoven. And I just reflected that for us in Europe or in the Western world actually, the history of score writing is the history of uh, growth of information in the score itself. So the Greek had only the melody written, then a little bit of rhythm, then, uh, and then some uh, dynamic, uh, so peu a peu with Bach. Of course, it's not a linear, linear history at all, but basically the, the story, especially of in the last 200 years or 400 years, is um, of, a, of a score that being from something that is like Lego. The Lego that I had when I was a child, it was just, you had just a couple of things and you had to really use to your creativity and knowledge. Uh, and the Lego of today, that actually is something that you have to reconstruct. Uh, now I'm putting in very, um, a little bit polemic and, and very, Zachman, say, uh, black and white, yeah? Uh, uh, but basically it is a matter of fact that the score, uh, through Beethoven, Debussy, Stockhausen, and so on, became something that was more and more, that looked more and more like a real, like an object. Like an object which people also, also the audience and the mu music world around the musicians, are allowed to consider an object, the fifth, to preserve as a museal thing. It's like a Saliera by Berlini, for, for the people, is the fifth by Beethoven, and also an object. And it's if you pardon me the word in these holy holes, bullshit. Because uh, we know, who, uh, or we don't, that uh, Matteo's Passion uh, could last in the last 50 years, uh, four hours, 
or two and a half hours the same object. So align Wegen the Dao in things that you can like or not, but we're talking about Hanapur versus um, Furtwängler, as I mean, people that had their own and followed their own uh, path of truth. Um, of course, today there, is, there are uh, a lot of very, very different uh, approach also to this. Uh, uh, I mean, there is a lot of improvisation and, and things that... Um, and uh, what is even worse than this, because I still think that uh, when I personally fa have to face a score by Stockhausen, I don't feel less free I, uh, than facing a, a score by, that has less information. Yeah? Because still you have to, of course, you have so much information that is even harder, uh, or you need actually even more time to realize all the information. And actually the point where your real research for the music should start, which is the time where you are able to do at least everything which is written, you should try to go for the things that are not written. That, and these are things that for me are necessary in every music I'm interested in, no matter how much information uh, is in a score. So, no matter how much information is in a score, it's still a score and not the music. You know what I'm saying. Um, but the thing that is for me a real problem is that how this increasing, this even uh, getting more and more complex of the score, musical score, it went together with the increasing and becoming more and more complex. The world itself of music production became, it became itself a very complex score. So, let's say in the time of Frescobaldi, the musician or <coughs> Tubach, they even published their own music. So they were not only composer, performer, copyist, violinist, general bass, got, uh, and violin virtuoso. They, they were publisher, they were public relation, uh, head of their own public relation. And now, of course, uh, this has been split and split and split in many, many, many professionalities. For the, for, for the single musician like I am, like we are, yeah, you have uh, the pianist for contemporary music, the pianist for minimal music, not for minimal music, the pianist for um, um, uh, English uh, complexity, uh, the singer, the Wagner singer that is allowed to sing three roles or four, and they are just, um, so, I mean, carried, if it's possible, weight-wise, carried, sorry for the joke, carried from, uh, from business class to the next, uh, just to sing the Frika or the Freya, and to move on. So, and this uh, looks, for me, very much like uh, Zara shoe production, yeah? It's like, this is made in Pakistan, so th this is made in China, and uh, this, is the, this is the reality of the, of the 90% or 95% of the musicians who perform at every modern uh, festival as well. Mm. But it's, uh, it's, it's the reality. Yeah. I would say it's kind of systematic for the classical music world, but on the other hand, for some of the uh, independent, let's call them independent music, Worlds like so-called experimental music, uh, non-academic, uh, acousmatic and electroacoustic music, and so on. The growth is, is going to the other direction. Like we have to do everything: composing, recording, mastering, booking the shows, <laughs> uh, booking the the, the the travel, and uh, doing advertisement and and. I, at some point I kind of like it, but sometimes it's so overwhelming, I, I can't cope with this anymore. It's too much. Uh, I cannot be multitasking like this all the time. And I know people also doing this plus video, uh, plus uh, writing the, the, the texts and uh, taking care of the website. It is also what I do. Mm. Uh, but you have to be independent. No, I, I, no... That's true. I like this independence mm -hmm. at some point. But it, I think that once you reach a certain level, and maybe because because you want to live of it, maybe, and not have a side job, then you need to do everything. Because you know that you don't earn enough to pay somebody to do the rest of the job for you, so you do everything by yourself. 
and then you have this accumulation of tasks to to be to, to be done and it's completely overwhelming and it's tiring as well. Mm. But this is so uh, but this is not only for the employee. No, no, definitely not. Of course, for freelance musicians. No, true, true, you're music. right. Yeah. yeah I'm, a, I'm a classical musician doing like all kinds of music. Uh, not only old music, but modern music and improvising and everything. And, and so uh, I have to do all this for my ensembles, to, to the, the, the PR, the homepage, the everything. And it's really, really, really tiring. And it's, I don't know how people, like as you said before, did this former times, everything, like, like really, uh, like you said, doing, uh, besides composing, editing, um, yes, and ca taking care of all what is... Um, Maybe the difference is, uh, now I was thinking like, uh, even if you have to do it yourself, it's uh, still uh, to be questioned that there are these uh, posted, so to say. No? Before, like, uh, if, if we com we don't have to whine. I'm, I'm not whining about the past anyway. Yeah? Yeah. I'm just trying. It's, the, it's that I know our past better than I know non-European cultures. So for me to talk about the past is a, a way to, to just a comparison. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, they did have helpers, of course. Uh, if they could make some money, I'm sure that Bach didn't do all the things. Like we said, I just wrote that uh, there is a story of Haydn, for instance. Joseph Haydn said there was a guy from London and he asked him, uh, um, I wrote a symphony, do you mind if I publish it under your name and I give you a you note know, 200 scudos or I don't know how it was she and I said yeah yeah it's okay it's okay don't worry so when he, when he, when he sold himself his piano version is the uh, seven last word, the Sima Let's Devote uh, he, he, said, he sold to Artaria the, the publisher four versions the, the four versions and he said to him uh, the best versions are the string quartet and the piano version but the piano version was not by him. So it's the idea that also not that uh, because for, for regarding PR and website, I mean, maybe it was not so, I don't know, in, when you, in the Baroque time, when you, when you had to go to Rome, okay, you go to Rome and then you, PR, yeah, you, you go to a you place. You uh, with a megaphone. You, you, <laughs> you, don't have, you didn't have to, to man musste nicht uh, WordPress beherrschen and uh, GarageBand uh, learn, learn GarageBand. No, yeah, that brings us back to something we were talking about earlier, is that the notion of uh, being known, being known by a lot of people. Nowadays, we, we are living in this uh, also ocean of uh, production and culture and so on, and you need to shout out loud to be known, or you don't, <laughs> and you keep the same level, but then it's harder, of course, to make a living and so on, so we are permanently kind of uh, maybe fighting, even though you don't like maybe this growth and this capitalism, you think, yeah, but I need to pay my rent, and what shall I do, shall I get a job on the side, or shall I just produce and produce and produce to render my work visible and get some grant and better positions for concerts and so on and so forth. Yeah, so. and I would have, because it's perfectly fitting, I would ask you, you're also an artist, oh, yeah. a shock, a shock effect. Um, yeah, you're an artist, fine artist, but also an activist. Maybe you can... Well, I'm thinking about, uh, first of all, in a, in a capitalist society, we are all in competition with, with each other. I mean, that's the foundation of the social relations. And I, I was asking myself by this... Uh, I mean, if you follow the latest development in, in coding and, and, and scripting and algorithms, you know that, that YouTube, for instance, is kind of completely uh, uh, artificial, intelligent, uh, generated content, which uh, knows how to uh, stimulate the... the the sensoric engine of the children to, to produce dopamine by clicking on the right moment for the right video, for the right sound, and, and to make them dependent of consumption. So, and I was asking myself also, when I listened to what you all said, uh, I mean, there was the Nearest Movement, like 20 years ago, who said... Which movement? Nearest Movement. Uh, one of the last uh, fine art avant-garde 
around the 2000, years 2000, who said stop all production. I mean, we are kind of repeating social discourse uh, and then historic discourse uh, for me in the last 40 years and 50 years about uh, how to get out, you know, out of this kind of social relations which always uh, organize us in a competitive uh, field. And, and the question is if you can shout louder, then how long can you shout out loud to, to, to do something which earlier maybe was kind of uh, provided by something called self-organization? Because uh, when you refer to Haydn, it's kind of a solidaric also effort to say to the other guy, okay, yes, I will sign it by my name. So this kind of recuperation, quoting, I mean, it's nothing new in the world of production and the world of art and in general. So I believe uh, a lot of things are question of how to, to, to organize uh, and, 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 and sustain and, and help uh, people to be able to collaborate in a way that they, they can kind of um, enjoy the social relation and not feel themselves into a kind of high standard competitive. Also, experience. like, it would be beautiful to, like, as a member of the site, to have the chance not to grow. It's very hard not to grow, whereas, like, one of the other reasons, like, microbes, they can decide to become spore and just wait for better times. <laughs> But like for us, if I had to fight years for like, I don't want to have a big laboratory. You know, I'm a scientist, I like to work with two, three people. It is very hard to be at university and not being able to like, just to, to stay small. I, I, I don't want to have a big lab. I don't want to, you know, and so, so like you have to grow, right? But I, it would be wonderful because also like, if, you know, None of the panelists wants to make money. We just want to survive, actually, and keep on doing the things we like, right? <laughs> but do, you, do you think it's kind of out of control once you reach a certain level that people jump on you and tell you you should work in this big laboratory or you should play at this big festival or you should compose more uh, of uh, your music? Do you think that after a certain moment you, you hardly can stop or slow down? I think it would also grow some of the dependencies, you know, and to who you have to listen and to whom you have to bow down. I think, you know, it comes with the territory. Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt you. No, it to is say not. It, it's Sorry. just that it is definitely not easy, you know, in any area, like, uh, not to grow <coughs> as a human being. And if you, if you mean, like, like, for example, earning more money than my mother now. No? She was thinking, what, you are earning the same amount of money 20 years ago? Yes, actually, <laughs> hardly, like, just the inflation. It's very hard for, for her to accept that, you know, that I don't care, you know. It's not, it's not trivial, it's not easy. It, you have to fight for not growing, mm. or for not earning more money, not having more responsibility, you know. It's, it's very hard. But I think the generation of our parents uh, kind of feels like that like a defeat that their children are not living in a better conditions than themselves. I know that from the generation of my parents. And I think uh, there are very interesting discourses and activism in the social political field where we kind of try to analyze what means growth, is what kind of a, a capitalist uh, calculation of the of the inland product, of the, what, what do you call it in English? The income. Yes, the, the, ever, the, the collective income by a <laughs> state. If that is the only kind of measurement of growth, so if we have to kind of uh, re research and rearticulate what, what is value, what, what would be value for us and for our societies, and, and does that have to be only kind of econo economical figures? Or is there something else which is a, of out of value or has some value? Yeah, I think that adding, um, an interpretation of growth from my side as a consumer, I'm not part of the, of the artists. Uh, to me, growth is becoming better, better quality, not, not the amount, increasing the amount, but the, the quality of what you produce. 
and um, from a consumption point of view of your arts, like uh, participated in the last two evenings, I think it's important, and this will give you support from in the, in the European individual and have support in, in administrative, if your art becomes better understood by the consumers. And uh, I brought along a friend here last night, she was completely new in, in such modern music, she, she doesn't understand this music yet, and I'm sure we, we discussed this. If she has the chance in the future to listen more often to such high quality music, she will start understanding it. And once she starts understanding it, she will be on the side of the people who want to invest or to spend their money for being able to consume such, such interesting and um, high quality music. So, to me, growth doesn't necessarily mean increasing the amount available, but the, 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 the depth, the Increasing the, the, the knowledge, in fact. Well, now you know what you can. The cultural capital. You know what you can. What consume this kind of yeah. culture. You increase your culture, your music culture. Yeah? And this is only possible if you, if you, if you train it. Yeah, you need yeah to and to invent, invest. Invest yeah, and to invent more, yeah? You wanted to say? But you know what you can give her for a birthday present next year? A Vimo de Amabo. <laughs> <laughs> that was the message. And my company to this, because it's really, this is also important, yeah? to be around people you, you like, yeah? like my friends, yeah? that brought me to this uh, platform. So, and, and Vimo de Amabo is doing a great job in my in my opinion, yeah, it makes it available, yeah, to to normal, to not the insiders as you most most of you are, yeah. You wanted to say something. Yeah, I think creativity is growth itself. Mm. If you are talking about building construction, uh, if the population will never, uh, we don't need any growth anymore. But on creativity, this is also in science. It is just growth. It is, I agree with you. Um, but I think also that... Uh, being Did you say you agree or you disagree? No, I agree. But being creative is getting harder and harder, I think. Maybe it was always too terrible. Maybe, 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 because everything has been done, uh, so, uh, so many things have been done, and are, are being shared instantly. It's always, again, in science... The problem is really, it is really sometimes, uh, for me, for instance, is the uh, pressure of production. Yeah? Like, it's a typical case. Now, you have a composer, let's take composers, or a, or a painter, and then they come out with something, let's say, new, because, of course, the market, also the creativity and the spirit, but especially the market, this needs is something new. We have in Sorry, this is the building same. construction. Uh, yeah, the, and then and then uh, he comes out with something new, and all people are. Then you have the hysterical hype of all the intendant and over Europe, Berlin, Bruxelles, uh, Rezo de Quai, Rezo de la. Everybody falls in love with XY, and then this poor guy or girl uh, has to produce a new piece, and a new piece, and a new piece, and a new piece, and. If uh, the new things uh, look totally different or even contrary from the piece that they loved uh, one year before, everybody, not everybody, I'm still polemically exaggerating, but basically the people are like, what the hell, I was asking you, I was asking you for Bernard Lang, why do you give me Bernard Lang? <laughs> and so this is, of course, I'm a little bit exaggerating, but it's a little bit uh, the problem. For instance, to, be, to have the courage of uh, going beyond your skin, and doing something that people do respect for you. You need really courage. I, I am afraid that you really need courage uh, today. Or maybe you, all, you always, it was always the case. But I mean, because the thing with the art, why should art be different from anything else in the mechanism of production and in a thought of uh, democratic and high level uh, togetherness? I understand that. On the other side, we do ask from art uh, something very specific which we maybe ask for religion before, or for philosophy, or we still ask for religion, philosophy. So if somebody, uh, I think we should be allowed to, to ask, or in, and even to let uh, other things happen. Uh, like I totally agree. Or like Nevertheless, it's 
embedded in, in these very real and concrete structures that one has to navigate as an artist. Mm. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, <laughs> we have slowly to stop, it's almost mm -hmm. time now. But thanks a lot for uh, the conversations and the ideas. Uh, I hope it's not going to stop here, that uh, your thoughts will grow <laughs> about all these uh, notions and uh, reflections. And uh, if you have any comments to, to give later as well, why not? Yeah.